Hi, it's Mary Beth Shaw from Stencil Girl Products. And I'm at home today. I'm getting ready to leave for Art Journal Live and in the midst of my packing and organizing and laundry and piles of stuff, I thought I would pop on live with you guys for a little bit today. And it's one of my favorite topics, which what do you think it is? Everybody's probably guessing paint, right? And um, hey Marlene, how are you? And it's not paint. It actually, I love paint and paint is definitely one of my favorite things. But today I'm going in a very different direction than I normally do. Brenda, hello. I am going to show you what you can do with stencils and stitching and this is very different so I first want to tell a little story we um, wait for some other people to pop on Mary Nasser just joined us but I'm gonna tell a little story I a couple years ago I was um, taking a class from Melody Ross Donna hi and as part of the class she had um, these patterns to make these little stitched things and I got all into the idea of it because I was in the midst of a lot of traveling and the idea of having this tiny little stitching project to carry around with you was really exciting to me and the idea was that you would do them on denim or just some little scrap of fabric and then you would um, sew these on so like a tote bag or you could sew them on your jeans or whatever so this is the one of course I only got one of them done you know I have the attention span of a flea Carol Baxter's on here so this is the one I did and these are like the biggest French knots of all time that are on there it took me forever to make these French knots and this says as you go around and this is Melody's design by the way decide once and for all that it really does not matter what everyone else thinks be free be brave and I just love this and so I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with it I know I could stitch it onto something quite easily and I love the look of it I just did improvisational stuff I mean you know remember back in the day when we all used to learn how to embroider I mean I knew how to do it then but you know I had to look up stitches and figure it out and okay so let's put that to the side so next thing I go down to ephemera Paducah with my friend Pam Carricker and we were going to teach down there and we go into Kristen um, Williams fantastic shop which you've I'm sure heard me talk about many times and she had these drop drop cloth samplers and I bought this one and I started stitching it hey Teresa hey Sue how are you and look at it up close it's so cool and this drop cloth Kristen was saying that most people are putting it on like it's just this tiny little piece of muslin right and all it did is it came with the design on it and then you just start stitching it tells you the stitches and these are stitches I had never heard of before like wave stitch turkey work guillotine stitch I mean they're just so different look at them close up I had to Google them to figure out what to stitch and so I got all excited about the idea of stitching but when I saw that drop cloth sampler I thought you know what we could use stencils to make our own samplers why do we have to buy a sampler which the drop cloth is gorgeous I mean don't get me wrong it's just adorable so I got a piece of muslin and this is a stencil that was a stencil club stencil and I stitched this it looks kind of like a abstracted eyeball or something it's a little different but it was really fun to do and I like the idea of improvisational stitching where you don't have to subscribe to any certain thing you can just kind of make it up as you go along and 
I love that. And on this one, you can maybe see that I have paint in the background. I have fabric here in the background. So it can be whatever you want it to be. Then around the edge, I did some kind of crazy stitch around the edge. And anyway, hey, Teresa Holt, I haven't seen you for a long time, girl. Hi, Peg. Anyway, it was really fun to make. So what I thought I would do today is show you guys how you can, Carol Baxter says, permission to be free, me first, me first, yes, is to show you how you can get these started on your own. Think outside the box a little bit and put your stitching hat on and maybe create something really beautiful. I like working small because um, we're getting ready for this road trip, so I'm going to take some of these small ones with me so that I can work on them in the car. And um, I don't know, it just seems like I'm often traveling, and so that's so easy for me to handle. If you decide to do this, Carol Howard's on here. Oh my God, she's like the queen of embroidery. I can't believe I'm talking about embroidery and Carol Howard's on here. Ah! But anyway, um, Carol's seen most of these. I'll hold this up for her again to remind you who have just popped on late what we're gonna be doing. We're looking at embroidery today. Um, Okay, so, oh, and then let me show you one more thing. When um, Stencil Girl did a booth at this fiber show locally uh, earlier this year, and Carol and Mary Nasser ran the booth, and then I popped in and I hung out with them. And there was a lady that was selling these um, little hand-stitched things from another country. And look at this. Is this the sweetest thing you have ever seen in your life? I just saw this, and... I just went crazy. I had to have it. It was like, I, I just cherish it. It's just so delightful and I just cherish it. So anyway, working small, I'm going to turn the camera down so you guys can see this and I'm going to show you what we're doing. Okay. First of all, any kind of little fabric will work. I think the key here is to have it be pretty flat. You don't want something nubby. So you want a flat fabric, okay? And what I typically do, I'm gonna try not to keep moving this on you, is I sort of think about what I want my design to be. And I was thinking that this little panel might be cool to put on the front of a greeting card. So I thought I'd do like a background that would be this Michelle Ward stencil. And then I'll pick one of these to put in the middle. Make sense? So I'm gonna start out. And here's the thing. I just do a light bit of paint at first, and then when I, um, I stitch, I have options. You can leave some of, like if you get really worn out with your stitching, you can leave some of the areas just painted. They don't all have to be stitched, right? I mean, shoot, it's yours. You can do whatever you want. So I'm gonna pick up the paint on the sponge just like I normally would, okay? But I'm gonna stay fairly light. And I'm just gonna pounce up and down over top of this. I have not worried about laundering or anything like that since these are just going to be for um, use, you know, for stitching and for greeting cards and stuff. Like if I was going to make something that was going to be a clothing item, I would launder the item first and then dry it without any dryer sheets so that there's no, um, none of that starch or whatever that's in it, in the fabric but I'm not gonna worry about that for this particular project, okay? This one, I think it might be kind of cool because I could um, just leave this whole background into in this painted design and then I could completely focus on the other. So we'll move this away and you'll see we've got our background. 
Now, you notice how I taped this down? This is because fabric, this is a pretty fat, flat piece of fabric, but a lot of fabric is kind of wavy or whatever, and, um, you know, I find it's better to tape fabric before I paint with it for sure. Now, this one, I think this one is too big. That seems maybe too big. This one seems about right. I don't know. Do you guys want to vote bigger or the medium? I'm thinking the medium. Andrew is saying for stenciling and fabric, he uses that repositional glue spray on the plastic stencil. So he'd spray the back of the stencil to keep it from moving. And he does that all the time for stenciling on cotton fabric, like fat quarters, which he uses and so forth. That is a great idea. Uh, and what he does is he makes book cloth and if you ever, ever, ever have a chance to take a class with Andrew, I would strongly recommend it because he is so good. All right, so I have some samples here that I thought, I don't know if I want a big one on there or not. I think I might just put this right here. And then, um, well, here's the thing. I'm going to just put this one, and if it doesn't seem big enough, then I can always stencil over it with the bigger one. And I'm going to use, I'm using sort of a blue-green green theme for this. So here we go. That is a great idea, though, that Andrew gives because I am doing this in this carefully and controlled environment where I'm keeping it very flat and precise, but repositionable spray would definitely be a safer bet. Okay, so there you go. So you can see that you could get started then on embroidering this any which way you wanted. <laughs> Mary Nasser says, hello, Teal. Yes, hello, Teal. And this does not need to look super crisp because you're going to be stitching around it and um, embellishing it from there. So now you can just take this. I would let it dry for a bit not really very wet but you could let it dry and then go ahead and do your embroidery on top as far as embroidery stitches this is not your mama's embroidery I'm telling you they've come up with so many new stitches I can hardly believe it I don't know who's been thinking of all this stuff all these years but it's pretty cool and what I do is I look on Pinterest. I have a, um, a board on Pinterest called So Lovely, S-E-W, Lovely, So Lovely. And that way I can um, store all of these um, stitches that I see on Pinterest and save them. So here's one that I can stitch while we were on the road. While we're on the road, I'm gonna set that aside and set this aside. And I have another one ready here. Okay, so this is just a canvas, a lightweight canvas that I have here, just like you would have a stretched canvas, only it's a lighter weight version. And I should say here that most of the fabrics I get, I tend to get at the, um, we have a um, like a teacher's recycle center where you can just get little scraps of fabric. And I also, when I'm at um, antique stores and flea markets, I just buy, you know, really grab bags of fabric because I really like doing that. Okay, so let's say we're gonna do this stencil. Now, instead of doing the, um, the paint, I am going to lightly trace around it with the pencil. Just to keep an idea in my mind where the little outline goes, okay? 
What I would like to do on this one, I already have a little plan. I would like this little border to become like a, um, an outline stitch. Hey, Kathy. <laughs> Kathy Kletzdale just popped on. She's become one of my new friends. I feel like I'm meeting so many people doing these videos. It has been um, so much fun. When I said I was going to do it for the month, I, I started questioning my sanity a little bit. And then, I, you know, here's the truth of the matter. I'm really having a good time. <laughs> I love talking to everybody. I just kind of wish I could hear you talking back rather than waiting for your comments, but it is what it is. All right, so there's that. I want to kind of keep track of this here a little bit and just put a little rough thing there in the center. Okay, so in the center... Maybe this would be pretty in the center, you think? I think it might. So what I'm going to do is put it on the back and trace around it. Okay? And then when I cut it out, I'm going to cut it just a little bit bigger, okay? Because if you look at the stencil, You've got these lines, this width here, and you want to make sure that you cover up those areas either with painting or stitching or something. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger than what I have traced. Okay? And when I'm stitching this, if I have some raw threads, it does not really concern me because this is supposed to be a homespun thing, first of all. And second of all, I like that look of um, slightly unfinished or whatever. If, it, if you find that's going to bother you, well, one, you're probably a better seamstress than I am, so you can figure out a way to do it. But, okay, so there's that. Now, <laughs> I want that stencil. Jade, I think you say that every day, don't you? Okay, glue stick. Just glue the back of it not a lot, and then it'll sit there and it'll dry down perfectly. It'll sit there, you can stitch it, and then it'll just, it'll hold it in place beautifully. Hi girls, hi Susan. She would be adding beads to hers, yes. I think beads would be excellent. If I knew that business of threading beads, I would be all over that idea too. Okay, so. Where was the, oh, this is where I always lose my place, right? Hmm. All right, let's just pick some other ones here. Is that, did I flip it? Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> this is like watch Mary Beth attempt to line up the stencil, right? So I'm going to just pick some others and cut them out. And... I think I may do a couple of this one. I think it would be nice to have a few of a similar fabric. And if I were a better teacher, I would have kept track of where these all go. This is like, I need somebody like Carol Howard over here to organize me, or Mary Nasser. They're like my organized friends, and they can usually keep me on track with things because I'm pretty improvisational. So I don't want to bore you with cutting all these out, but I think that you kind of get the idea how this would work. And you can certainly go back and let's find one where this kind of fits. Do you think that one might fit there? Yeah, I think that one will fit there. Anna, hi from sunny California. Oh, sunny Oklahoma. Lucky girl. Actually, it's sunny here in St. Louis today as well. A little hot, but it is sunny. So, so I would just put that down. And then you can pick some other pieces, some other different fabrics. 
that might match. And you can just build this up as much as you want. Um, I'm going to go grab some of my stitching to show you. I have this bag of stitching that I carry around with me and you can use whatever kinds of threads you might want. I like, I like these thicker ones lately because they cover a lot of territory when you do your border. They are really, really pretty. And, um, but then there's, you know, your old fashioned, the more common type cotton too. And um, I'm gonna see if I've got anything else going here. I have this little book of hand embroidery, Stitches at a Glance, and I carry this with me. It has some of the, just your basic stitches, but I have found out, what is the name of that stencil? Um, this is, I think it's Doodle It Daisy or something like that. Um, yeah, this is fabric, Mana. So basically what, um, what I look at is like, do I want a straight stitch or do I want a filler stitch? or do I want something decorative? There's all kinds of options that you can look at as far as stitching goes. And um, this is just an idea. I'm not gonna sit here and stitch in front of you. I think it would be boring as heck. Plus you'd probably see myself, see me stabbing myself. Okay, Mary Nasser said that is called Doodle It Daisy. So tomorrow I'm going to be on the road on my way down to Arlington, Texas. I'm going to try to pop in later, but it might be just really, really random. So I apologize in advance if that doesn't work out. Um, I will pop in, though, from the scrapbook convention and take you guys around the floor so you can see what it's like. Ooh, I think I want to use that gingham for sure. Isn't that cute? Love that. Definitely need to use that gingham. And um, so be on the lookout for scrap fabrics. Um, before you leave our Facebook page, make sure you sign up for our newsletter, The Scoop. And um, we've got some news coming soon that you're gonna wanna know about and you'll get it on The Scoop. Be sure and like my videos, share them if you find them interesting. And thank you so much for enjoying part of your afternoon with me here at Stencil Girl Live. Thanks again. Bye-bye.